the oceans have to be part of any discussion about climate change. Climate change is unequivocally happening, so it's not something one believes in, but in fact the facts support that sea levels are rising, oceans are warming, they're more acidic, having big effects on the animals and plants that we depend on in the oceans to produce things like fish for us to eat or the oxygen that we breathe. And we hear often about a so-called pause in global warming. Well, the fact is the oceans never stop. Everything we know about this system suggests that it will accelerate and do so greatly in the next uh, 20 to 30 years. In the ocean, carbon dioxide is a major pollutant. We've all heard about greenhouse gases, and as we warm the atmosphere, most of that heat is taken up by the oceans. We have very good measurements now of heat content change in the oceans. That's the real smoking gun of climate change. Fisheries and species are shifting, and they're following climate and temperature changes. We actually have uh, fish thinking they're in Baja, but they're really in Monterey. We've had bluefin tuna up here. We've had a number of species that our fishermen have never seen before in this far north. We are changing the chemistry of the entire global ocean with CO2. The oceans have about 10 times more acid in them than they did 30 years ago. CO2 is absorbed by the ocean and creates carbonic acid. The same sort of acid that's in soda pop poses some very key physiological challenges for some organisms. Probably the best known is for organisms that make calcium carbonate shells. We all know calcium carbonate. It's the shells we see on the beach in clams, coral reefs. A more acidic ocean makes it much more costly energetically for animals to make their shells and make their skeletons. But I am concerned that we are currently underestimating uh, the magnitude of sea level rise that's possible by the end of the century. And one of the defenses that many uh, low-lying islands in the Pacific and the Caribbean and the Indian Ocean have against sea level rise uh, is the presence of coral reefs. Corals are under threat like they never have been before. They suffer harm from these higher levels of CO2. That means the CO2 curve has got to come back down. If you think about the business as usual curve, it's increasing exponentially over time to so the year 2100, it's still going up. The curve that allows the ocean to continue to provide services to people, food and protection and livelihoods, is one that goes up and then levels off, and then by 2100 is beginning to come back down. If we look at Earth history, when we've seen large changes in ocean conditions, we've seen massive extinctions. And what does that mean for society? It means that we'll have a different ocean. We'll have different resources. And we may not like what we get. When you're thinking about climate change, it's the relationship between climate change, the ocean, and people that has to be an incredibly integral part. So the agricultural community, the fishing community, and the conservation community all can benefit from thinking together about what we can do in climate change. As a society, you know, this is the right thing to do. Let's deal with this. Let's start investing in, in solutions. Think more about how much food we get from the ocean, how many people live in coastline areas right next to the ocean. Every other breath we take is produced by ocean phytoplankton. It is essential for us to care about climate change and the role that it plays in affecting ocean ecosystems because our very lives depend upon it. 